do that. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, there's no computer sound to share, so whatever. All right. Um, sick. Uh, you you heard what I said, but for uh, our uh, YouTube asynchronous audience, uh, welcome to uh, first micro mouse lecture. We'll be introducing the curriculum a little bit, and then uh, a little more than we have already, and then uh, talk about some batteries, voltage regulating things, and uh, yeah. So. Uh, how do I do this whole thing? Boom, I already said that. All right, so uh, if you haven't met us, these are your incredible leads. Um, I'm on the right, Bradley's on the left, and we are in, for all your first years out there, we're in the best dining hall on campus. It's uh, it's called B-Plate. If, if you disagree, then uh, we can, we'll can we return your deposit immediately. Uh, let us know. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. You For those of you who don't know what yeah. B plate is, it's the uh, it's the healthy dining hall on campus that has small portions, so you can try all types of stuff, and it's like bougie food, so you feel like you're eating at like a really nice restaurant, and their food is good. Like, I'm trying to think, it's been a while. Like their breakfast, B plate breakfasts are amazing. They have, like, okay. I have a friend. I have are, a friend yeah. that says that they serve squirrel slash rabbit food at B plate, but I've never seen a rabbit eating steak before, so like. I, I don't know how accurate that is. So uh, yeah, so these are your leads and this is what you'll be making throughout the year. Uh, this is one of the prototype rats Bradley and I were making over the summer. Um, normally you solder everything on, but uh, it's remote this year. So we'll be shipping out some kits and it has a breadboard on it. You'll be uh, implementing a lot of the hardware on the breadboard as you can see in front of you. All right, It'll, uh, so. you'll have, yeah. I have one right here. This is an old version and you guys will be receiving one like this soon with a very nice logo on the back courtesy yeah. of All right, Tyler so, and James. Uh, real quick, hope it's not too boring. We're gonna fall quarter, gonna teach you some of the basics. You'll uh, put, implement hardware on your uh, breadboard, get to move around, we'll build it up. Uh, in the winter, you'll uh, give, give it some intelligence to help teach you how to solve a maze. Um, well, additionally, you'll, we'll be covering some PCB design fundamentals, uh, and uh, you'll be assigning a little breakout board for your rat. In the springtime, you'll uh, pick an ability or add a feature to your mouse to upgrade it. And then uh, at the end of the year, um, you'll be competing in our first, or it's the first virtual um, AAMC, and uh, be some fun prizes at the end of that. So uh, moving on, um, yeah, Bradley. So just going over some logistics, stuff we need you to do right now. If you uh, saw in our email, we need you to submit your deposit as soon as possible. Um, uh, you should sign up for Facebook and Piazza. That's how we're gonna be communicating with you guys. Facebook for mainly events, Piazza for resources, for discussion, for announcements. Um, just so we have ways to communicate with you all. Uh, we're also going to be sending out some team drives so you can have a place to store all your files. Um, if you have anything you want us to check out, you can just point us to the team drive um, just to make things simpler. If you are unaware, IEEE has a Discord server. We can, we'll post the link somewhere. Um, but Tyler and I have our lab hours that you can find on the IEEE website. So if you ever have any questions, you can just drop in during our lab hours or just honestly drop in to talk to any officer. Officers aren't scary, they're all pretty cool and they're just normal normal people. So like, don't be scared of officers. Um, if you haven't already, and if you have teammates, contact them. Cause uh, yeah, your don't teammates are, yeah. Yeah, don't be the team that um, like th hasn't reached out to their teammates after two weeks. That's just a weird man, just reach out, yeah. it's fine. And like you, like you'll you'll have lots of fun with your teammates. For example, Tyler and I were teammates in Micromouse last year, and now we're leading it together. So who knows? Who knows what you'll end up doing with your teammate? Um, another thing, we're going to be try to we're going to try to ship out kits this Sunday. So, what that means is that if you have not submitted your deposit and or told us where to ship your kits, we will not be shipping your kit because we don't know if you're like still committed or. We won't know where to send it. So like by Thursday night, because they need to print the labels on Friday, we need your deposit and we need you to fill out that Google form we sent out so we can ship your kits. So yes, 
pause it, yeah. Google form. Those are the two main things. Um, failure to do so is pretty much an assumes drop from the project. So do that ASAP. I mean, In fact, tune I mean, out the can... lecture and do that right now. It, it's fine. <laughs> Um, I mean, we could send it out like a week later, but that sets you behind schedule and it, yeah, it makes things messy. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, real quick. Yeah. Um, uh, this upcoming Friday, there's a, there's a project mixer. So pro uh, members from all the different IEEE projects will be in attendance and uh, we'll be playing some games and stuff. And uh, there's some uh, bragging rights for the project and uh, Bradley and I are kind of competitive and we hope you guys are too. Um, so we want you to show up, help MicroMouse flex on all the other projects. And uh, yeah, Bradley, tell them about SPI. Oh, yes. So David, the R&D, not the, not the David you heard from earlier, different David. Um, the R&D lead is starting up this or restarting this IEEE program where basically if you have a project, IEEE will give you money to do it. So like, if you have a project, it's a great opportunity to get some money, get it going. Um, there's the tiny URL on there and yeah. All right. So that said, um, I'll stay here for just a sec. Um, real quick, does anyone have any logistical questions or anything like that? Um, type in the chat, unmute yourself. Or, I don't know how this works. Um, Otherwise, we'll go ahead and continue. Uh, the Google Doc is one per team, right? It's not one individually. Uh, the Google yeah. Form is that what we're yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, uh, a couple teams, uh, we might send two kits because some of the people live far. But for the most part, um, it's each team, one person on each team uh, applies or no, fills up the form because uh, sending one kit per team. Yeah, so we just need um, that person's address to send to. Yeah, unless we've contacted you, we're assuming you're okay sharing. Yep. And if not, uh, you can reach out to us and we can maybe try to figure something out. I don't know. All right. Absolutely wonderful. Continue, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. Do we have any other through. questions? All right. If not, then uh, it's lecture time. <laughs> so uh, let's see. So what we'll be talking about, uh, oh, by the way, real quick, um, don't, there's no reason to take notes. Like uh, we're, we'll be oh, yeah. talking about some, uh, we'll be, a lot of this stuff is kind of bonus knowledge, um, knowing about theory of like different types of batteries, what a voltage regulator is, that's a good introduction and um, it'll help you kind of know what you, it is you're doing in the assignment, but there's, there's no, tests there's no midterm or anything in micromouse so like uh this is for your own intellectual uh enhancement whatever so uh, and yes just, what's yeah. up and, and yes these slides will be posted um so yeah no need to take notes all the information will be there this recording slides will, will be posted. posted recording will be well re it's recording it'll be posted too yeah. so yeah and, so, and uh, the assignment is really detailed so like all the information you need will be on there as well okay so that being said um we'll be talking about power that's batteries and then uh how to hook them up to the rest of your device using voltage regulators and then i uh, will be introducing some of the software that we'll be using uh over the course of micromouse so uh let's, let's go batteries um I'd, I'd hope uh, if you got into MicroMess, you know what a battery is by now. Um, there's several different types. There's a lead acid, you might find it in your car or something. So they're kind of heavy, pretty reliable and uh, cheaper, but um, you won't see a MicroMess towing one of those around. So uh, there's nickel metal hydride, most of your double A's and that right type of battery or that type. Uh, they're prone to something called a memory effect, which is where uh, if you don't discharge them all the way properly or follow a certain charge cycle, then if you keep, every time you recharge them, they kind of diminish in capacity a little bit, um, but they're relatively cheap and uh, provide some decent energy density. So sometimes you'll see a portable, like devices will use these kinds of batteries, but um, more 
relatively recently. Um, you know, my own and LiPo batteries have uh, kind of come to dominate portable electronics. So the charging is a little complicated. Um, you can't just plug them in, they need to follow a certain charge profile. Uh, but usually there's chargers built to handle that. Um, you'll, you receive a charger in your kit. So that uh, handles all the fancy charging requirements. Uh, they, uh, they are very energy dense and uh, they're compact. So that's exactly what we're looking for with micro mouse. So it's a small little car that needs decent, it needs decent power capabilities for the motors. Um, so yeah, so the batteries we use in micro mouse, they, uh, we have two 3.7 volt LiPo batteries and uh, together they are 7.4 volts at quick maths. Uh, let's see, uh, you might know when you're working, when you're working with them that when they're fully charged, they're actually slight a little bit above that. They might get up to 4.2 volts around there. But um, yeah, so their average is gonna be 3.7. Um, let's see. Yeah, the reason we use two of them is because the motors that we use in MicroMouse, they, uh, both of them, they require at least six volts. So one of these would not be enough. So uh, there we go. We have, uh, we need two to get above six volts. All right. So uh, Bradley, why don't we use a nine volt battery? Uh, you know, Tyler, for that's, actually, that's actually an excellent question. <laughs> Also, side note, that is a very nice cat. Cat, oh, appreciate it. Oh my God, I um, love cats. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Tyler. Why don't why don't we use a nine volt battery? Okay. You know, okay. it seems like uh, it would fit really nicely on that PCB. Like, we tried strangely to, nicely. We tried to use a nine volt battery, and uh, we learned a lot in the process. And uh, we're going to tell you about that. So uh, we actually designed the rat initially to work with the nine volt battery. It's uh, you guys uh notice once you get your rats you can play around with this but it actually a nine volt battery actually fits perfectly in there as a remainder of this experiment yeah so um the reason why is because uh batteries they have a they have a something called internal resistance so different so nine volts have a relatively high internal resistance so what the heck does that mean um that means that when there's a you're trying to supply a lot of current to something like a motor uh, which is what we were using in MicroMouse, then um, that means that it says nine volts on it, but it's not going to spit out nine volts. It's going to be more like three or something. So uh, if you've uh, taken physics class in high school, or you recall from, or if you've taken an electrical engineering class at UCLA, then uh, you might recall Ohm's law B equals IR. So uh, there's a resistor stuck inside your battery and it's trying to spit out a bunch of current, then there's going to be a voltage drop across the resistor. So high current, relatively high internal resistance, voltage drop is going to make it less than nine volts. So uh, I uh, check out this picture. So we did a test setup and tried to see, OK, how long can a nine volt battery supply half an amp? Um, the answer was, and have a voltage above six volts. The answer is around 13 minutes, um, which isn't a lot at all. So, um, so nine volts are great for low power applications, uh, such as like in a microphone or something, you can stick it in there. It's just receiving sound, it's fine. But for something like with motors that uses a lot of power, um, they're less suited to application which is why we settled with LiPos. Or I wouldn't say settled, they're pretty good. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. All Take right. Away, Bradley. Yeah, so- Wait, hold up, now that hold up. Yes. Does anyone have questions about batteries, types of batteries? Hopefully not what a battery is, I don't know, but <laughs> I'll answer that too. Uh, does anyone have any questions of anything so far? Yeah, all right. Sick. Sorry, Bradley. Just want to make sure. Good. All good. That was a good interjection. Um, all right. So now that you have your batteries, what do you do with it? Well, uh, 
you know, our MCU runs on 3.3 volts and together our batteries output um, 7.4 nominally, but uh, up to up to 8.4 volts. Um, so we obviously can't push that straight through our MCU because it's going to blow itself up. It's going to, it's not going to work. So we use voltage regulators for that. Um, so the voltage regulator that we'll, we'll be using is called a linear voltage regulator. Um, basically it's the, it's, it's a simpler type of voltage regulator um, and it gets the job done. Basically it acts like a resistor that varies um, and it just lowers the voltage down. Um, if you want to get into more nitty gritty, um, it, it's like, it, it, yeah, we won't, we won't get into that. You can, you can talk to us if you, if you're really curious, but um, yeah, we use a linear voltage regulator that just checks if the output is like what we want. And then it sets the output to, in our case, a solid 3.3 volts. Yeah, the gist um, of it uh, is the batteries, it's, it discharges over time, right? So we want a stable voltage for ev everything. So if, uh, so your device is gonna work differently as if uh, it just receives a lower voltage as you have it turned on. So um, instead we, you have a voltage regulator, it regulates the voltage. So it helps remove ripple from the power coming out of the battery. So that's why we need yeah. it. And uh, study this yeah. fancy uh, circuit graphic here if you, to your heart's content if you like. But, um, yeah, okay, yeah. so. Uh, just uh, yeah, some other options that you may consider. Like, I guess if you want, you could consider just putting a really thick resistor um, off of your batteries to step down the voltage. Because as we, as as Tyler mentioned earlier, if you have a resistor inside of your battery that lowers the output voltage because there's a voltage drop across that resistor, the issue with that is that basically you're taking all of that energy, you're just turning it into heat, which will make your piece be really hot. Um, another thing is that it'll burn off an amount based that varies with the current and the uh and it'll also depend on what your battery voltage is so it's it'll be very unreliable especially if we're dealing with like and like drawing an amp um on the other side of complexity going from super simple to a lot more complex you have switching regulators these are pretty efficient um they're a little bit harder to implement and they're a little bit more expensive but generally what they do is they switch on and off the output really fast so it'll, it, it, it minimizes the heat loss and that output being switched on off really fast averages out to the voltage that you want. If you look at it um, over time. All right. Um, yeah. All right. Does anyone have any questions before we keep going with this? I have a question for you all. Uh, when would be an appropriate time to uh, use a resistor uh, to step down voltage we got any takers did you say an appropriate time yeah when's an appropriate time to use a resistor in a circuit to step down to a different voltage like instead of a full-on voltage regulator i mean you can use it as like a heater <laughs> that's true um not with not the answer I had in mind but definitely a valid one uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a resistive heating elements that literally their sole purpose in life is to like they're in toasters, like it's just a fat resistor that heats up. So yes, that is correct. Um, I had I, I had in mind was uh, for really low power applications. So when the yeah. load is small, um, then the, then you can use them like as a voltage divider to kind of get a reach yeah. a desired voltage without a bunch of without a full-on regulator. What were, what were so, you yeah, trying to say? Or Jared posted in the chat. Yeah, that's exactly what we're thinking of. If you, uh, Tyler, if you actually go back slide. Yeah. Um, oh. You can see in our voltage regulator circuit, if you look at V, or if you look at RF1 and RF2, those resistors are actually stepping on the voltage um, from V out and creating um, and helping us monitor the output voltages. So that's actually a situation right there where we're using resistors to create specific voltage yeah so um when you when you aren't trying to like actually supply current you're just kick, like the an op amp which is what that triangle thing is um it only it doesn't really 
draw any current, it just kind of senses what the voltage is. So since no current's going through, it, uh, it acts a lot more predictably and linearly. So uh, you can use a resistor in that situation. But for yeah. motors uh, and other things, that's a little less ideal. All right. All right. Um, so yeah, here is the regulator that we have on our rack. It's the AZ1117 IH-3.3. Um, to break that down, it's the, the main type is 1117. It's like a type of voltage regulator. And then the dash 3.3 means it's suited for 3.3 volts. Uh, we put the data sheet up here because one, creating data sheets is a really important skill. That's something that will serve you very well throughout your entire career. Um, some things you want to highlight our output voltage, you can see that's the first one. That's 3.3 volts. Wait a volts. second. I have a laser oh. pointer, guys. Oh my God. Oh, dang. <laughs> okay. Um, All right, so cool. yeah, 3.3 volts. That's what we're looking for. Um, the other one is current limit. If you want to highlight that one, Tyler, you can see that it can supply typically uh, at least one amp, typically 1.35 amps. Um, so yeah, that's suited for what we need in our applications. Um, Oh, oh, two batteries. Actually, that takes us into a very good question right here. Um, actually, okay, first, first to answer that, our motors require six volts. These batteries need supply 3.7 volts, so we need two of them. But the question is, our MCU uses 3.3 volts. These batteries supply 3.7 volts. So does anyone have any guesses as to why we why we hook up both motor, both batteries together and supply the full 7.4 volts to the voltage regulator that goes to the MCU. There's one thing on this data sheet that tells you, um, it's a little hard to pick out, but does anyone have any guesses? Yeah, uh, while you're looking for that, I'll just talk a little bit. So um, yeah, so the close, you'd think, okay, so what, how the voltage regulator works is it kind of burns off extra voltage. So you'd think that the closer your uh, input voltage is to the desired output. So um, for example, if it were five volts, uh, you're supplying five volts and then getting 3.3 volts out, uh, you, that'd be a little more efficient than supplying 12 volts and trying to burn off all that, an extra seven volts to get, um, to get down to 3.3. And let's see. Ooh, we have a couple of answers in the chat. Uh, let's see, related to ripple rejection. Uh, ripple rejection is important for the input. So if uh, the input's really crazy, then that starts to matter. The batteries are all right. Um, James hit it on the head. So um, the, if you'll see on here, there's a stat called dropout voltage. So uh, it's around, let's just call it 1.3. Tyler, do you mean Salvador, One. not James? Did I read it wrong? Oh, wait, James. Uh, VN minus, oh, wait, never mind. James had a correct answer. Salvador had, yeah, never mind, never mind. Okay. So um, the motors, they take some, we just feed the supply, the 7.4 volts to our, uh, our motor driver, which we'll talk about in a future lecture. But all the digital electronics, the cool processor looking thing on here. It uses 3.3. So the reason we feed 7.4 volts into the regulator instead of 3.7, which intuitively would make it more power efficient is because regulators have a um, have a parameter called dropout voltage. Uh, do you want to explain what that is, Bradley? Yeah, so dropout voltage essentially is how much our input voltage needs to be above our output voltage. So in this case, our output voltage is 3.3 volts. It says the dropout voltage is 1.2 to 1.4 volts. So that means our input needs to be at least 4.7 volts in order to guarantee that it'll be stable. Um, if yeah. you dip below that drop, dropout voltage, then your output will start decaying and not doing what you want it to. Right, so exactly. So there are some regulators that a little more expensive usually they're low dropout voltage regulators so uh instead of the dropout voltage being four point something like you need to give this at least 4.7 volts in order for it to work normally it might be like it can be three you can give it 3.8 and it'll work normally up to that range so uh 
yeah, so those are some important characteristics about voltage regulators. And um, if you're worried also about putting too much voltage into your regulator, these data sheets list absolute maximum voltages. In this case, it's not listed here, but it's 18 volts. So we can safely supply up to 18 volts without, well, I guess you don't want to go right up to the limit, but in theory, we could give it 18 volts and it, it would still work. Okay. Cool. Does anyone have any questions about dropout voltage or this regulator in particular? All right. If there are no questions, then uh, let's introduce the software we'll be using. Yeah. All right. So, software. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, we're going to be using Cube IDE to do all the programming for the micro microcontroller. So, uh, you'll very soon discover it's a, just a little just a little bit more powerful than the Arduino IDE. Um, you're able to, there's a lot more uh, features and things you can configure closer to the hardware using Cube IDE. So um, it, as far as it's a uh, ST, who makes the STM32, um, they've developed this IDE specifically for their STM32 line of microcontrollers. So that's why we are using it. And we, we also use it because it allows it like, it has a bit of a graphical user interface too, where it's not all just code. It allows you to look at specific pins, select things, um, and then it configures all of the, all the driver and source files for you. So it, it simplifies a lot of the user interaction. It makes it so you can just focus on the code that you actually care about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then uh, on the, so that's the software side. Now on the hardware side, we're going to be using Eagle uh, made by Autodesk. Um, this is really accessible. Uh, you can get a free student license as long as you're a student. Uh, it works on all platforms. Um, if we're being completely honest, I like using Altium, which is a different PCB design software, but uh, um, it, it only runs on Windows. It's pretty thick. So uh, you, it, it, if you have a small computer, it'll kind of burn you out. Um, so yeah, we're using Eagle, um, and uh, yeah, well, well, you'll you'll get the setup in your assignment, um, and if you ever want to learn more about PCB design and go into more depth in the assignments, just know I am happy to talk about PC, PCB design. Something Bradley is so right. happy to talk about PCB design. He's a <laughs> PCB design wizard. So if you, uh, he's, I I can do PCB design. Bradley like can really do PCB design. So send all your PCB design questions to Bradley. All right, um, we're, uh, we're coming towards the end. Uh, here's the assignment, here's the first assignment. It's due uh, in a week, uh, end of day, right? Um, so first step, install the software we just talked about that you'll be using for the rest of the year. And uh, yeah, so Step one, install it. And then we're gonna teach you how to walk you through writing your first program. Uh, it's just really simple, just to make sure things work. Um, we're going to ship out your kits on Sunday and uh, should receive it ASAP pretty quick. And then uh, if you've done the assignment, then all that you'd need to do at that point, there's no hardware, you just plug it in and upload your program and it should work. Um, just a yes. warning, it does look like a very long assignment. A lot of it is just downloading stuff. Um, yeah. It's, a, a of, it's yeah. very verbose in the, <laughs> we made it that way intentionally such that um, hopefully if you get stuck, have a question, you have an answer. Um, so it's just, it's, it's the first time you might have been doing these things. So we want to be very specific. Uh, future assignments after this one will be a lot more open-ended uh, and less specific. So uh, Bradley, can you tell them about the schematic part? Yeah, so in the schematic part, uh, actually some backstory. So normally throughout the year, you design your own mouse PCB from scratch. Um, logistically, that's not entirely possible because 
we don't expect all of you to buy your own soldering irons and order like we don't want to assemble all of your mice for you because that would be very time consuming so instead we're still going to have you make a schematic um throughout the year of all the things we're working on one so you can just have the experience making a schematic which is a really important experience and two so you can have everything laid out in one document of how everything's wired um so the second part you'll be making a schematic um yeah wiring up the voltage regulator like the circuit we just talked about so you have a chance to look at voltage regulators see how you would wire them up and how you would connect them to other things um one bonus thing that you could potentially do on top of that um if you guys remember we mentioned that there's going to be a point system slash leaderboard system this year so how do you earn points well finishing assignments this first assignment it's your first chance to earn some points and there's going to be an extra credit assignment in, you know, guess what? Making your first PCB, if you're really curious. Um, that extra assignment won't be due um, as soon as the base assignment. You'll have more time until, you know, after the, um, after the, uh, the workshop on PCB design. The, yeah. Yeah, you'll have until, until the, the end of the quarter. quarter. Um, but yeah, that'll give you some practice there. We're also going to have some fun competitions. Um, you know, Halloween's coming up uh, and you're receiving your own rats. Um, so, you know, something fun we thought of is like, what if you dress up your rats? Uh, you guys can come up with different categories. Um, we'll have a little show off at the end. Um, so yeah, get some, get some ideas brainstorming. We'll send out more details about that later. Um, it should be fun. There will be um, prizes and you will want them. So yes, the same. We, also, we want to hear what you guys want for prizes. Do you want merch? Do you want some fun components like dev boards or um, I don't know, other things? Do you want us to just give you a shout out? Do you want to be featured on the newsletter? Do you want an internship? I don't know. Whatever, Riley. Yeah, disclaimer, I don't know if you could actually give you an internship, but you we'll can try. Just, uh, we'll, we can try. Oh. Uh, fun fact, um, MicroMouse gets you internships because you can talk about it. You know, those career fairs the past couple of days, mm. I've talked about MicroMouse so much. It's insane. Okay, that's a, that's a side detail. So yeah. um, let's see. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions about like the assignment, the leaderboard, any suggestions on a, you want to see the prizes? Where the science is being posted. Um, Bradley, you can answer yeah, that better. We're gonna we're gonna post them on Piazza. Does that does that work for everyone? We just want to make sure um, we can post them somewhere else if that's more convenient for you. All right, okay. cool. Um, let's see. Thank you again for uh, showing up. I know uh, it's MicroMouse is a little untraditional this year, online everything. Um, It'll feel a lot more official once you have your kit, you have uh, the cardboard maze I've been showing lots of pictures of and uh, your actual physical rat. And uh, it's a, again, a little slow start, just downloading software. Um, yeah. You also you don't have to worry about downloading anything until we release the assignment. Um, that'll walk you through some stuff. And if you have yeah. questions, you can always post them on Piazza as we go through. We'll try to check that and then uh, you guys can also answer each other's questions. All right, so Bradley, look, we can stick around till 6.45 okay. or whatever for questions. Yeah. I'll stop the recording. Um, um, we're here to chat, but- First ideal time recording. for teams to meet up with people. Um, that's a good question. 